Hello, hello. Hey, David. Hey, Calvin. How are you? Good. It's been a little while. Indeed. Uh, I like the beard, man. <laughs> this is just a couple days. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Luke. Hey, Taylor. <clears throat> Morning, everyone. Let me, howdy, howdy. Let me write video on. Here we go. Uh -huh. What is that shirt you're wearing? Oh, is that a gopher? That's a gopher. Yeah, uh, Cloud Strike. One of my favorite gopher t-shirts that they, they've made. Made it back uh, safely, I uh, see, Taylor. Made what? Made, made it home safely. Well, not home, Seattle. Um, oh, because the Open Source Summit. I'm speaking today, so... Yay. I'll be I trying to find all, the, find all the Wasm folks that are here. I know there's a few. Uh, what's the title of your talk, Taylor? Uh, it is Mind the Gap Between the Future and the Present. That's the name of it. Cool. Is that pretty similar to the one you gave at Wasm IO? Um, kind of. It's based in the same area, but I obviously they're in two entirely different audiences. So I um I decided to to just basically use that as a basis and change it to what I needed it to be. Cool. Why don't we go one more minute and then uh <laughs> announce quorum and get started? Sounds good to me. I'm just pulling up the OCI stuff so it's ready to go. I won't be able to take notes because um, I am on a single screen, so it's really hard to talk and take the notes. I would be happy to take notes. Thank you. Uh, anybody want to uh, share the meeting? Except for Taylor. Taylor, you've done it too often. <laughs> Doesn't I'm always available and willing. That's what it comes down to. Is... Anybody else? Okay. I am happy to do it if nobody else would like to. Um, like to leave the opportunity open. It really isn't too bad. I promise it's not too scary. And if you you want to, you're you're totally able to. And we can help you along the way too if you want to. Okay. <clears throat> um, it is eleven oh five where I am at. Five minutes past the hour for everybody. Uh, hopefully, I don't know if we have anybody in here in you know thirty minute time zones. Uh, they do exist. Um, here. We're calling to order the uh, TAG Runtime WASM Working Group meeting for April 16th, 2024. Um, my name is David Justice, and we are going to, we are a uh, CNCF uh, uh, subgroup, and we abide by the code of conduct. So please be kind to each other. Uh, raise your hand, you will be recognized. And uh, our agenda today is pretty pretty light. We have one item that I think uh, we're all excited about and can't wait to hear uh, you know an update about uh, OCI WASM uh, or WASM OCI artifacts and yeah, the proposal and the report that's uh, been going on in the subgroup. Um, super excited for it. Uh, looks like we have Taylor here. Um, I know James's name is on there. I'm not sure if uh, James is available today. Uh, so Taylor, are you uh, prepared to uh, walk us through there? And I know Brandon, you, you, you've been active in this as well, Calvin. Um, so yeah, well, you all, thank you so much for the hard work you've done. Can't wait to hear what's going on. Take it away, folks. Yep. So um, pretty much most of the people actually present in the meeting today were involved in making this, but I'm going to give the overview anyway for... Um, purposes of recording and we still need to be able to, I'm hoping we can, I was hoping this meeting we have more people, but if we can get to more people by next meeting, I wanna make sure we get sign off on this 
that everyone thinks we're okay, that it's good to go, and then be able to, to put this together. So let me just give a quick quick overview. So I grab the link and then um it's not that one, this one. And put that in the chat. And then um I will go ahead and share the doc and walk through it. Um and give you kind of an idea of where things are at. So let me share the screen. Okay, you should be seeing a Google Doc, correct? Okay, perfect. So um, over the past two months, we've been working together as a um, subgroup here. Um, the meetings have been on the calendar. In case you missed them, they've been going on um, around how we can store uh, WebAssembly, any type of WebAssembly, but in particular um, with support for components uh, as an OCI artifact. And we wanted to have this be essentially a agreed upon standard we're all willing to, to comply with. So what it boils down to, and I'll get this out of the way at the beginning, is um, Brandon, who's been very helpful and a huge shout out to him. Um, he works a lot in the OCI space and um, gave us the the thing that it doesn't, we don't have to get any approval outside of the interested parties. So this is not like a, like a W3C standard. Or this is something where we all agree, we put it in an agreed upon place and then we can, can use this common artifact type. So, um, for those who are not familiar with OCI, there's the core OCI like image type thing, and then there's the artifact. And the artifact is any, and the artifact spec means you can pretty much shove anything you want to into an OCI registry. And that's what this is based on. And part the the things that make up a manifest are the manifest itself, which doesn't change, and then the config type that goes along with it that provides the the metadata needed for the runtime to make decisions. So um, what this boils down to for us is what we've come up with in this manifest down here. And um, it is meant to be used for any component or WebAssembly. The top level is um, very, very straightforward. It's exactly what you'd see if you're used to a normal OCI manifest. Um, there's two key things. We've decided on the media type will stay the same as basically like an image manifest. Um, saying so we know exactly what this is, it's nothing different. Um, and then the config media type is specifically application VND WASM config v0. Obviously, we'll be able to um uh we'll be able to pass in like a, a v1, v2 as we continue to iterate through this. And that's something that um is a good time to call out this. This spec is meant to be iterative, it's not meant to solve all the problems right now. It's meant to be a good base that we can continue to iterate on as WASM continues to evolve. So if there's something you see in here that's not there right now, let us know, but also the, the right answer might be to say, hey, we're going to push this out to the next version of it. Um, and hopefully iterating on this should be much more simple than, than designing the whole thing like we did this time. So, um, the other thing you'll see is layers, something special, and that we called out explicitly in this comment is that index zero of the layers is your entry point to the application. Um, we wanted to, to future-proof this a little bit, and the idea in the future is that we'll be able to store what we've called exploded views of the component. And so a component um, is often made up of multiple other components that have all been composed together. And for purposes of storage, um, you want to be able to explode those out into common components so they can be only stored once in a registry and then be um, accessed by their content hash. Now, there's some cool things that can go there. Right now, we're really honestly expecting there to just be one layer because um, we don't really have all the all the things there and, and kind of things around the exploding and imploding components. But we expect that to be a thing in the future. And so um, this is all specified here around you have to use basically content hash importing and a couple other things that, that will come down the line there. But right right now, when you're, we're expecting there probably only to be one layer, and then as we continue to evolve the tooling, this will be probably multiple layers all exploded out with the first layer being the one whose um, exports are actually called. So, um, and I guess I should state that here for those who might be coming to this fresh or new, exports inside of WebAssembly, components, you have exports and imports. Um, exports are what you're able to call on a final component that lets you access its functionality or and imports are things that it needs to be able to function properly. So that is the top level layer. Um, I figure this is probably the most 
um, easy part of it. So I'll pause there real quick if there's any questions before I go into the media type, which is where the meat of all of this is at. Okay. So down here in config media type, um, this has some similar things um, to what you've probably seen in another config media type. So we have still architectures, authors, all those kind of things. The architecture will be WASM. Um, right now, there's an OS. These have to match by spec the Go OS values, which means you have WASI IP1 and WASI IP2. Um, and so those are, those are your two OS things that you can select. WASI IP1 is a catch-all for the original like P1 stuff, as well as plain WASM, because there is no WASM value in Go OS. So uh, that's something you just be aware of. Um, we do also pass. This is an interesting thing. This is one of those parts of the spec that made us all kind of LOL sob a little bit. Um, but most people actually, when you're looking at the identity of an image and when you do like Docker PS or Docker LS or any of those kind of things, you're actually looking at the SHA of the uh, config media type, which means you have to have each of those be unique. So essentially, we just have repeated um, digests of all the layers that are in the image. Um, just, to, just to note, we have all these things documented. Um, now the other big part here, like I said, we try to keep this simple is that there is a component field. This thing, this field must be present if it's a component. So if your OS is WASI IP2, there must be a component section. Otherwise this can be omitted. Uh, and what we, what we have right now are two fields. Um, this is essentially a reduced version of what you see inside of a world file. Um, once again, just to define those that term for those who might be new, inside of the world of components, you have your WIT files, which are um, WASM interface types. They define your your, inter, your uh, interfaces that are composed of functions and, and types that you generated, very strictly typed things. And um, those exports and imports are, are declared in what's called your world. And so every component's world will put in the exports that it's exporting out and the imports that it's requiring. And then there is an optional field called target to say, I am targeting this world. Um, that way implementations can say, I'm going to make sure I, I check this world and I, and I target it. And there's several um, well-defined worlds such as HTTP proxy that are out there. And most of the main um, I mean, WASI interfaces have the, these types of worlds. This is an optional field, but it, it does allow for, for indexing um, and for other purposes there. And then the exports and imports is also basically around for two purposes. One is for the runtime to know what it is, um, just at a high level before it downloads the, the component and then in, in introspects its, uh, its width. And it's also for tools such as WORG and other things that might be indexing this data and that should be easily available without having to download all the artifacts. So um, this is basically the how, how it's supposed to work. So the um, actually I'll pause there and then I'll kind of say what the, the two outstanding um, questions are, but any questions around this? So essentially how this functionality is going to, um, what, what we want, hope people are going to do to implement this work is um, we'll probably have a common set of, of structs and things people can use. Um, I'm one of the maintainers, for example, the OCI distribution crate for Rust. So I'll probably whip something up that's not part of the main crate because this is not part of the main OCI spec that people can use. Um, we'll probably have a couple other ones like that. But um, the idea is that any implementer should be able to take um, to take the wit or take the wit from the component that they get, inspect it, generate this config, um, put together the manifest and be able to push it. And so this can be generic command line utilities like um, or us or any of those kind of things that can this can also be um, specific build tools such as like spin uh, spin registry pushing wash uh, wash inside wasm cloud, any of those kind of things can all have also use all these same libraries anyway. Um, but essentially it'd be a standard way for all of us to be able to do it. And the idea behind making this standard is that everyone should be able to share these components back and forth and be able to compose them as they desire. So um, there was a remaining um, question around um, what does this look like for, um, 
for different application types. So people have different um, types of application metadata they can push along with it. And the general feeling after talking to James, which is still obviously we can talk about more here, is um, that this is this is how you store components. Any additional like specific platform metadata can be either stored in its own custom format or in another way. Um, that includes things like WDAM files and WASM cloud. We don't sh store those in, in, in OCI, yet, but that's an example. Um, spin.toml, um, any of those kind of things um, are external to this thing. These are the components themselves and how they can be shared. And so um, the, the question was there because some people were asking if, if we should be able to have some, some way to represent that. And it seems like the cleanest way to make this so everyone have basically a reusable thing that everybody can, can then fetch and compose things together with is to keep it strictly scoped to WASM itself. Um, so that's the initial opinion up for discussion here. Um, hopefully when we get a little bit larger group. Um, and then before I forget the question, because it's early for me, um, I'm going to spit it out and then we can come back to it because I saw your hand, David, um, is that uh, we need to decide where, where this is going to live. If we want this to live inside of a CNCF repo somewhere, if we want this to live inside of the Bytecode Alliance, um, Luke had brought up maybe putting this inside of like the component uh, model repo since um, it, it has the component support, but we should probably have a conversation where we want to put it. But coming back to the original question, David. Uh, oh, sorry, mute was tough to find. Uh, <clears throat> so when you say the uh, spin toml file, it should be outside of this, um, what does that mean? So where where would outside be? So let's imagine I go to, if I just am containing components within this manifest and layers, um, where should that file live? Where would, like if I'm packaging static files, I'm guessing the answer for static files would be something like a virtualized file system component? Yes. Is, okay, so, so would, would that... Yeah also be the spin toml would live in a virtualized file system component? Yes, there's se there's several ways here. And one of the main ways we discussed was WASIvert. There's a reason that the reason why we we uh, invited Guy to come in a couple weeks ago was because we had been talking about this exact problem inside of um, the OCI part of this. And we, WASIvert is the kind of thing that can allow you to package up these virtual file systems fairly simply. And, and put them together. The other main concern around here is um, how you indicate, because then you start getting custom, um, custom like runtime things that have to get shoved in here somehow. And the idea was, hey, let's not try to do that because then we have all these things like, okay, here's the use cases now, but WebAssembly is still very much evolving and there could be other types of runtimes and other types of things that come along. And so, trying to have these be specific and like shove in, you know, like specific things for each runtime, no matter what it is, awesome cloud spin, run WASI level details, that doesn't really matter. Um, we don't want to have that kind of information, have to like have some sort of special indicator or field because then <clears throat> it also reduces the usability. Oh, like cause a component is a component is a component is the idea. Now, sometimes it might not be able to target the world you want to, and that's fine. But I like if someone writes something, the, the goal here is if someone writes something, for example, on Wasm Cloud, and they now want to run it on spin, I want them to be able to take, the, if long as the interfaces are there, they can adapt it using whatever they want to. Um, they can take that without needing to know specific things. Oh, man, I love the cat coming into picture. It's great. Um, uh, I, they don't have to take in specific things um, and then figure it out for that runtime. And so that was kind of where that that discussion came from. Now, if we can think of other ways to do it, I'm all game for it. But the, but if we can keep it fairly pure and either virtualize these as their own components that might have static files included with it, um, it keeps everything a lot cleaner um, and also allows for a lot of the flexibility and composition, which is intended from the component model. So if you have um, if you have if you don't want to use those files that are included, you could technically take the component and substitute in your own files or whatever it might be, depending on, on your runtime's need. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, at least it does to me. Does, 
does anybody out there have a, a question? It, it was kind of heady. Like it's, it's, I, I find the everything is component uh, discussion as kind of a, a weird way to think about it uh, initially. But after you think about it and spend some time with it, it really is kind of convenient to be able to call these things components and then box up this functionality into, into something that is also a component. Um, yeah, anybody have anything on that? It's a mental model that I'm not sure I'm personally fully sold on yet. Just for me, it seems hard to explain to people who don't already know WebAssembly. Uh. Yeah, I I totally agree, Daniel. <laughs> so the um the the thing that it comes from is this like for most people this is going to be transparent because um this is something I've said before and we'll say again like Wasi Vert is essentially configuration for Wasi. Now that's not what only what it can do. I want to be clear about that, but like it's how you can provide knobs and tweaks and 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 putting stuff away. And I think a lot of people won't even notice that this is going on. So if you require, like, let's say that we're going to say there's an imaginary runtime here that requires specific files to be present all the time. Like, let's say it's a full, like, file system with a bunch of different, like, configurations and static files and all these things, something that doesn't exist right now. Um, for all intents and purposes, as long as they're accessing it through, you know, like, WASIFS, and then you just come in and pop that in as part of the config, as another component, that's something that I think is the um, the the way that does it. And, and it, it is a little bit different, but like components can be used both as this like way of like, it, it was the thing we struggled with from the beginning because components can be libraries and executables. And so it kind of, um, kind of throws a little bit of a, a different curve into this. Yeah. I'm mostly thinking like the WASI file system thing gets potentially complicated with deduping a ton of static assets that can potentially be their own layers and deduped right now. But that's fine. Like too many layers breaks every OCI thing anyway. So yeah. and I, I feel like at that point it's one of those things like is this what you want to do or did you want to do this in a different way? Like, do you really need all those static files? That's where I start to get to that. Well, well, that optimization does seem like a thing that Wazzy Vert could do if we were to put, if Wazzy Vert were to put each file in a separate data segment, and then we were to add to Wasm the ability to import data segments, then each data segment could be its own separate layer. And what's cool is it's a little better than normal layers, which are ordered and their their order dependence. If each file is its own little layer, then they can be deduped on a file by file basis, independent. You know, there's no ordering to it. So if somebody wanted to go all the way that way, that it seems like that that is an optimization that we could build. Um, yeah, and, and that would that would be this whole exploded view of components. So so that that was that's one time is is we can get those sort of optimizations. Um, but the, the other one is one kind of useful criteria, one concrete win from like this approach, which is having the OCI image just represent just a component and not a component plus other runtime stuff, is that I can use like one of these OCI clients and say, give me a single file. And I can get a single file, and then I can give that to a WASM runtime that doesn't know anything about OCI, but it does know WASM and WASI, and it'll just run. And so what we've done is we've kind of like forcibly decoupled like OCI as a representation of, you know, uh, as a representation from uh, not being part of the runtime semantics, which means you know, it gives us a lot more flexibility of where we run these components. And we can put put a component into OCI and pull it out and put it into a different thing, and, and, it, and it just kind of maintains us that uh, flexibility. And also we can know... When I want to talk about runtimes, I go to the runtime specs, and, and and I don't have to look at OCI because it adds this extra little bit of stuff that shows up at runtime, which is nice. And then one last comment also about the uh, some of these manifests. Often I'm you know it looks like they're pulling together multiple distinct components and they're running them in a distributed fashion, like that's part of their strength. But now they're they're really a new semantic layer that's one layer higher than a component, right? Like like a, you wouldn't. You know, like a Helm chart, for example, goes into its own OCI artifact. Why? Because it's a bigger artifact that encompasses multiple things. And so I think some of these spintomals and WebM files and all these other things, they deserve to be in their own artifact because they could point to multiple OCI images because they're what they're uh, that contain components or containers or who knows, you know, all, all, all the, you know, the components is the building block of this distributed artifact uh, potentially. So I think a, a different OCI artifact would make sense for them.
And I think to to add on to that, like the the reasoning behind this is like to decouple exactly what Luke was saying, but also to take advantage of all the things that people already have. Um, this is a like onboarding ramp thing for people because everybody already knows and uses OCI. They have SIG store or whatever other kind of signing thing they have going on. And so the more we can integrate into that and provide that availability, it and then it decouples that, like Luke said, the, the runtime decisions from the actual um, storage of the thing we're running. And so, um, yeah, I like, and I don't think this is going to, um, like, the, the idea here is we want to make sure, will this work for what we have? As we continue to involve, we might need to answer that question. What if I have, like, all these different files that I want to store or, you know, like, all like those. But what I want to make sure is that it can work for storing the component. We can use that tall store here. For any other custom things, we can still, like, we're already all using our own custom um, basically content types and things for the stuff we're storing in OCI artifacts to deploy a lot of these things. And so that doesn't restrict us from using those things, but it does give us a standard place to store the components themselves that we're going to be using to compose these, these bigger things that we're building. So perfect. Um, we did get a few more people on. Welcome to all those who came. Um, uh, what I want to do is we've had some good discussion here, but I don't think we have enough representatives from the, from the different basically companies and parties that have been involved here to, to be like, okay, we're good with this. So I would love to schedule kind of basically like, it's not a vote, but basically like the discussion, are we okay with this check mark, thumbs up, whatever we want to call it um, uh, for the next meeting and see if we can get that and say like, we're good with this and then just start iterating, see what we've come up with. Um, how does that sound to people? Okay. Awesome. I will add that to the agenda for next time. As soon as I'm I'm done with this, I'll copy for next, the next week. But let's see. Um, so please bring um, bring the people in. Hopefully James is here. Um, and then Danielle, if there's any other um, folks from Spin and Fermi on that are interested, make sure they come along. Um, and then anyone else from who, and I know Calvin's here, who's doing a lot of the web industry stuff. So um, just, I'm trying to make sure we have at least a good enough representation so we can, we can pass this off and say, this is good. And then we'll make sure we deliver this. Um, I might also schedule something with like me and David to go report back on this at one of the tag runtime meetings, once we approve it so that we can show, um, that we're completing our charter at a Watson working group. That's it for me. I'll pass it back to you, David. Okay. Um, so I, I added that action item at the bottom, uh, just as a reminder. Um, not that I don't expect that you would do it. <laughs> um, okay. So I think that uh, I think that exhausts our agenda for today. Um, are there any uh, any announcements, any public service announcements that anybody would like to chat about? Yes, please um, sign up, tell people about Promote WasmCon. Um, it'll be in Seattle in June. Um, love to have people there. Uh, it was really great last year. We had all sorts of like, I think we had basically Wasm represented across the whole spectrum of what it can do. So uh, like we had edge stuff, we had browser stuff, we had everything else in between. So we'd love to have that again. Um, yay, Joe, it'll be good to see you there. Um, so please do try to, uh, uh, spread the word, even if you can't attend yourself. Um, hopefully this time, um, we can, I, I would like to schedule if we can get enough of us there, um, an actual in-person, uh, WASI working group meeting. It'd be real fun if we could do that. Um, and then dinner afterwards. Sorry for the people who'd be remote for that, but at least we could all say hi and eat dinner together or lunch or something along those lines. So um, uh, just let, like, we, as we get closer, we could probably plan that, but uh, um, would love to see people there. Um, we're, we're really hoping that, that WasmCon can, can keep going year after year. It, it's kind of been leading towards that so we can have a nice, you know, CNCF sponsored open event for people to come, come to. So um, I think that's it for, for the general conference stuff. If you are here and you can see this recording, I will be at Open Source Summit all this week. Please come find me if you are a WASM person. I'd love to chat with anyone out there. 
um, and anyone else who's going to be there. Um, so just, yeah, that's slightly selfish, but also I know there's Wasm people here. So if you see this, <laughs> come say hi. I like finding the Wasm people on Wasm events. Yeah, and this one's going to be at the Seattle Conference Center, or Seattle Convocation Center, or whatever, uh, down on Pine and like Sixth or something. So you're going to be right downtown this year, not uh, in Bellevue. Yep, that should be fun. Um, <clears throat> all right. Uh, any other PSAs? Uh, yeah, Lan and Radio are going to take a look and try and come to the next uh, OCI thing. Super. Uh, I'm bullying them into it because Good. I have too much <laughs> in my head to add more specs. <laughs> well, and I should I should also, that reminded me, thank you, Danielle. Um, we won't be holding the OCI meeting since the work is complete for now. If we decide to kick it back there's too many problems or whatever we'll, we'll restart it but we're going to go ahead and stop those those meetings so next week there's no meeting we'll continue the discussion the meeting after that is that a at uh, this meeting cool yes i will yeah. send the correct link to people yeah so um yeah just so they they can um they can come here because i think at this point like we're not in the nitty-gritty because before i mean we were going like line by line through like json which is not like the best thing for this meeting but now we're at the point when we can talk more about that high level um that high level conversation so excellent excellent all right uh any new stuff in WebAssembly land that uh folks want to talk about <laughs> Taylor, you got the floor, man. Sorry, I just have all the news. Um, Joe gets credit for this too. So um, we got, uh, so me and Joe and Kate Goldenring and Joel Dice over at Fermion, a bunch of us all got together and we smoothed out a bunch of the rough edges on the, um, on the WASI key value interface. So that is landed. So there are now two things that are pretty much ready for implementation. We actually already implemented WASI key value in um, Wasm Cloud. And Kate, she was like ready to go and basically do it in spin. I don't know if she's done it or if she's prototyped it or whatever. But um, we, so like we've implemented that now in Wasm Cloud. As soon as spin does that, it also means we can move phases. If anyone else is out there and they're implementing the, they're planning on implementing WASI Cloud, now's the time to start implementing that and give feedback. And we'll make that like zero to zero once we get some implementations and everything in place. Um, the other one that's ready is WASI runtime config. Um, that one uh, we we made a small change to, and um, got some feedback from people here like Danielle. So thank you to all who went there um, and did that. Um, next steps for that, so people know we're going to be doing. Um, I'm going to probably create a WASI vert adapter that can convert between. MVARs to config or config to MVARs for anything that that might be using one or the other. And then, yeah, after that, we'll be working on some of the other ones. Um, I'll probably be working on messaging and or blob store next um, with Joe and, and get those all polished up and ready to go. Both of them are very close. I think messaging is the one that has the most open discussion items. So um, then we'll get those and we're going to have a nice full suite that everybody can then implement um, for those 80% use cases. So that's the big news. Wazi key value, go check it out. Yes, Daniel, sorry, you look so good. What's question. the direction going for messaging? Because it was initially like the most naive send and receive only thing. <laughs> hey, uh, it's almost like you read my mind. <laughs> 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 um, so uh, yeah, I'm working on that right now. Um, it was reviewed by some architects, one from Microsoft, and then I think Kevin, um, who's been in here before, also reviewed it. The thing is, is it also, um, we we need, we had the architects look at it. Now we need the people actually implementing it, looking at it, which is what's going on right now. And for example, I'm trying to add in at least an optional like reply to field because, you know, request response, like, and I kept, I would like, I got a little bit of pushback and I was like, so I started pulling everybody who I knew and they're like, yeah, we kind of use that. And I was like, okay. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to decide like what level and I'm trying to clean up some things there like, it, we called they called it format spec rather than just calling it like content type. So like there's those kind of things I'm trying to fix so that it's not so 
that that's my plan. So I'm going to be opening a PR or changing the PR I have open to kind of address some of those things soon. Uh, if you link me to the PR when it's updated, I will come be annoying because I've never seen messaging that didn't involve request response, at least somewhere. <laughs> yeah, let me, I'll, I'll pull up the PR. It's like, I haven't touched it in a couple months because I've moved on to the Wazi key value, but yeah. Thankfully, Wazi key value in spin is mostly copy pasting and removing one API. Yeah. And no, it's an API okay. that should never have been added, so I'm happy. To, to give a little context, <clears throat> uh, the Microsoft reviewer uh, was Clemens Vasters, uh, who is a signatory of the AMQP specification. Um, and much of the feedback... Uh, so messaging is hard. Um, for everybody that has spent time in messaging, messaging is very, very hard. Um, so if you want to do like the full AMQP or like some you know, very robust protocol that has spent a lot of time, uh, being, you know, implemented, vetted and, and, you know, refined, then that's, that's a very, it's a good possibility. We could do that. Uh, we can also do like things that are closer to simple request response, uh, do we want to introduce ideas of competing consumers versus cooperative consumers? We have a lot of things that we should perhaps have some sort of progressive uh, functionality. So like, hey, here's the easy, here's the math. Here's the easy math. Let's go with math. Math is uh, pretty, pretty simple out of the box. Um, and then we have this like, oh my gosh, now we need... Uh, uh, we need to be able to take leases out on key spaces and cooperate across many different processes. Um, you know, th that's probably lower level, somebody actually doing that. Uh, there's there's probably somewhere in between too. So um, let's try to let's try to do our best. <laughs> yeah, I think my plan right now is to take some of the we had some really good discussion on the key value thing. Um, around how to handle it. And I think we might do something relatively similar where we have a core thing that has a certain le level of functionality. And then um, for those who didn't know, you can go read some of the, the comment threads long, sorry, but Luke brought up some really good points on there around being able to essentially extend um, wit resources with additional methods, depending on what you give it. And like, that would be really useful for something like messaging. And so we can basically work around that right now um, with uh, basically you can basically pass a handle in and then have like a, a handle to that resource right now without extending it. And then once we can kind of get and ex express that, um, we can, we can do that as well. So anyway, there will be plain discussion there. I have to go basically rework that entire PR Danielle, just so you know, but like I, I it's been doing a lot of noodling. That's why I haven't really touched it about what, what to do, because, you know, when people know what they're doing, like the architect. So it's like, okay, well, let me see what we can do to hit the middle ground. Um, so any ideas are welcome. If anyone else comes up with something before I do, just let me know and I'll come in and help provide feedback on said PR. Just, we want to collaborate on this. So let's do it. And this one's going to be the practice for the really hard one. So in my Don't mind, tell me you're mentioning SQL. I am 100% oh. <laughs> talking about SQL. To me, that is like the toughest one out of all of these. Messaging is difficult, but SQL is like, that's... My, That's way out there. My hottest take is you can't have a generic SQL interface and trying is just asking for pain. You're not alone. Um, there's uh, There's been multiple discussions around, maybe we have some for the, like the lingua francas of, of uh, SQL and at least have like a couple separate ones. Anyway, we're not going to open that. I'm going to just close that can of worms down right now because um, that will take us an hour of discussion just in and of itself. But yeah, I think like that it is the last on my list specifically because it's the hardest. So like we get blob store working, we get messaging working, and then we'll go try to conquer the beast altogether. David, I was wondering the first, the architecture reviewed the messaging and who has all the AMQP, AMPQ uh, experience. Is that a review um, published anywhere? I'd be interested just to learn about subtleties there. The, the protocol, the specification? 
Oh, or the review of that 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 architect did of. I'll, Wazzy, I'll link Wazzy. you. I'll link you, Luke. One sec. Okay, yeah. so it's it's well, in the Wazzy repo. Should be in thread. Yeah. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah. Oh, cool. That's yeah. Cool. Clemens was kind enough to donate some of his time, and like we shamed him into it. Um, <laughs> kind of felt bad, but but yeah, um, he's and and as as any you know person uh, deeply immersed in the technology space that that they and they know it so very well. Uh, and have written about it at length. Uh, you know, the first response is, "Please, please go read the specification that I wrote <laughs> and, and understand it deeply before uh, we start having uh, superficial conversations." You know. Yeah, I can see how. Because I mean, I don't know if this messaging spec does it involve all these like delivery semantics, like at least once, at most once, exactly once. Because that's when things uh, well, get real tricky. Yeah. Really tricky. Yeah, settlement, settlement semantics. Uh, mm -hmm. Like uh, you can negotiate on a given, uh, and I'll probably screw it up, so I, I won't try to do this, but basically you can send messages that are pre-settled. You can say, I need to have settlement, meaning after it's written to durable storage, you send me an ACK, this kind of stuff. Uh -huh. um, so you get as close as you can to exactly once, right? Because exactly once is kind of a- Yeah, uh, it's bad. either, it, it's possibly impossible or some people claim it's already a feature they have in, yeah. you know, confluent. So <laughs> I think it all d depends on IO. Uh, can you repeat things without performing visible IO? Uh, if no, then it's impossible. But if yes, then yes, you can, you know. I mean, given the, like, the largest cloud provider can't guarantee that when you kill an instance, it doesn't have a right path to disks, um, even after another VM has right paths to them, I don't think you can safely implement exactly once anywhere. Well, if you can control all the observable side effects of it, you can, right? Because then it's just a database transaction. I think Joe. I think Joe captured it effectively once versus exactly once. <laughs> um, yes, effect. Right. It's, it's observability. <laughs> observability outside. Uh, anyway, you know, on the topic though, I wonder if trying to define messaging the abstract. I mean, maybe there's a simple messaging carve out. That's a good starting point, but. You know, what we've said before in a number of cases is a theme emerging is WASI maybe isn't supposed to invent its own things out of whole cloth, but rather find existing specs and just witify them. So if AMQP or MPQ, I forget which one, is already quite well defined, a wit binding to that could make quite a lot of sense. That way you don't have to redefine and rediscover all these semantics. We're just like this wit corresponds to that already specified interface. I think I mean, that's a thing but, that for a lot of cases makes a lot more sense than trying to do anything other than a high level. Like WASI messaging as a, I just need to shove a message somewhere. I don't care about the exact semantics is fine. But the second you need to do anything non-trivial, I think you have to like actually yeah. specialize. Yeah, I, I would add to that. It would be so cool to possibly have like this, this, interface layer, say AMQP, uh, here is the protocol implementation of WASI, and then have like, you know, uh, the Java library, the Go library, and all of these be able to use those uh, as a similar implementation. Um, that would be, I mean, just kind of similar to, uh, you know, uh, WASI libc, right? Or, yeah. Yeah, this is what people are already, for those who like my, I always think about the poor people come and watch this. I want to learn about WASM. They're like, oh my God, what are these people doing? Um, the uh, the cool thing here is like, this is work that's actually already being done in a lot of language libraries for stuff like WASI IO and WASI HTTP and all that. So this is very distinctly a possible future um, for all this um but yeah, and and I think like once I think we learned a lot from the Wazi key value thing because I think we kind of found the the eighty percent case that like wasn't like okay we know that this can be a complex topic, but we also don't want to make it too simple. So what's that middle? So I'm hoping with everybody collaborating, we'll be able to get to something relatively decent that hits that eighty percent use case. And I'm kind of excited to see because I, I've always imagined I'm going to step up on my soapbox here for a second. I've always imagined that like, for example, with Wazi key value, Wazi key value would be implemented by everybody. So like a company like Redis would implement Wazi key value so everybody can use it, but they could also implement Redis key value. And so anyone can opt into additional functionality or more complexity or whatever they might need. And it'll be the same thing for some probably these messaging things. Here's some basic messaging, but if you want to opt into something better, 
like for your use case, then here is how you do it. You know, like it's an either a separate interface or takes handles to the existing, whatever it might be. But like, that's what I'm hoping these things look like in the future. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, for the recording, Daniel basically said, you can virtualize the simple interface on top of the complex ones. Um, so anyway, okay, we're we're way off in, in left field now. Um, so I said my my thing about the WASI key value. Uh, so I'll pass it back, David, in case there's other people who need to say things now. That was a very fun digression. Uh, is there anybody else have anything cool in WebAssembly land that they would like to talk about? That they think others should know about that maybe aren't so fluent in this bit? Okay, going once, going twice, and we are sold. Okay. I believe we have exhausted our agenda today. Uh, I believe we can call it uh, a day and give 10 minutes back to people. Good. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, without further ado, thank you all for joining us today and having this, this spicy discussion about messaging and uh, informative discussion about uh, the path forward for artifacts. I'm super excited about this, and I think the artifacts are really a key for lighting up the uh, Kubernetes ecosystem with WebAssembly and helping folks grow on their existing investments in cloud native infrastructure. This is gonna be really cool. So thank you all and uh, really appreciate everybody working on this stuff. All right, have an awesome day, everybody. <laughs>